The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to Contours Travel webinar. This morning I'm going to be, oh my name's Rod, and I'm going to be talking about the other Peruvian treks. Last week I uh, did a webinar on the Classic Inca Trail and previous weeks the Sacred Valley, Cusco, all of those can be found on our, on YouTube by searching Contours Travel. Okay, so this morning I'm going to be talking about alternative treks other than the Classic Inca Trail to reach to Machu Picchu. Okay, so the area that I'm going to be looking at, Peru, um, essentially is in to get to Machu Picchu in and around the Cusco region. Okay, so Cusco serves as a starting point for the treks to Machu Picchu that we're going to be discussing today, okay, in the country of Peru. So to get to Cusco, you've got various flight options. There's no international airport in Cusco as yet or servicing longer haul routes. There are a couple of shorter um, domestic or interconnecting flights into Cusco from other countries, but not far afield, okay? So essentially, you normally have to fly into Lima, connecting through to Cusco, or from Arequipa, Puno on Lake Titicaca, Puerto Maldonado in the Amazon, La Paz in Bolivia, or Bogota in Colombia. So once you arrive to Cusco, it's normally recommended that you spend two to three days in the Cusco region to acclimatise, because the altitude is 3,300 metres. We're just looking at the beautiful Plaza de Armas main square of Cusco. So it's a very pleasant place to, to spend a couple of days, just relaxing, taking it easy, and slowly acclimatising. The altitude tends to affect people whereby you can experience a little bit of a shortness of breath but just by um, increasing the intake of water to um, get over the dehydration and slowing down what you do, you can generally overcome the effects of altitude quite quickly and adapt and be ready to set off for a fantastic trek, um, one of many options to get to Machu Picchu. In the region, the, um, the probably the high season and the busiest time to travel is through April through September and also the um, shoulder season of March and October. Um, and this relates heavily to the rainy season and the dry season. So trekking in the dry season, obviously less rainy days. And then in the, in the wet season and the shoulder season, you're looking at um, more wet days. Generally, it's quite often um, afternoon downpours, um, tropical rains, so um, it's, it's still not a, a bad time to go, but certainly probably from March through to October is the main trekking season. Daytime temperatures don't vary greatly. Um, it's more the um, cloudiness or the overcast around January, February, November, December, and also the, the very chilly nights in the summer months of June, July, and August. The, once you fly into Cusco, with those couple of days that you've got, you can explore some of the Inca sites outside of Cusco, in and around Cusco, as well as um, the Inca sites of Saxo Woman, Tambo Machai, just outside of the city of Cusco here. Okay, so a couple of days can very easily be spent around Cusco and further afield in the Sacred Valley. Lots of wonderful accommodation options, five star, four star, three star, catering to all um, types of accommodation preferences, boutique to high end to mid range, um, whatever you're after can be found in the Cusco area. Now what I'm going to be talking about this morning is the various different Inca trails or trails leading to Machu Picchu or thereabouts. Okay, we've got the classic Inca Trail that we went through last week and today we're going to be talking about alternative routes, looking at the Lodge to Lodge trek, um, which is the Salkantai Lodge to Lodge trek, which involves driving from Cusco and then a final train for a short section into Machu Picchu. We're going to be looking at a trek from Laris, traveling through, um, driving to the town of Laris and then walking down, hiking, and then a train ride into Machu Picchu. So none of them hike into Machu Picchu exactly like the classic Inca Trail, but this is one of many, many trails in the Cusco area. I'm going to be going through a few of those today um, to give you an idea of other options because the classic Inca Trail does fill up due to permits. 
Okay, first trick is the Selk and Tie Trek to Machu Picchu, and this is a lodge to lodge. So people who are not wanting to camp, but to get a, a true or a less visited experience, um, on this is a seven day trek. So initially leaving from the city of Cusco, be transported via the Inca ruins um, up to via Moyapata as far as Marcosa. That's when it's time to get out of the car and start hiking. Okay, so that's the starting point for the trek. And then, then you've got a trek of around about five to six hours down to where the first and second nights are spent around um, Saray. Okay, staying at the, the lodge there. You have the following day a trek around to acclimatise a little bit of a circuit around there, so back to the same lodge on the second day so that you're, you're fully acclimatised, you're getting used to the trekking, the altitude before setting up and up over the high pass at Selkan Tai and on to weigh it up. Okay, continuing on after your third night up to Kolpa, to Lukma and then eventually on to um, the Hydroelectrica and onwards to the township of Aguas Calientes or the Machu Picchu village, and then visiting. Okay, so that's the six days, and I'll just go through a little bit more detail now um, with some pictures to give you an idea. We've got the beautiful lodges where you stay, um, set out in the mountains, generally with a hot tub, a fireplace, so that you can explore the area. Okay, and on day one, as I mentioned, going by the Inca site here, via Moyapata, and then onto the Camino Real. Okay, or the Royal Trail as such, to reach to your first lodge at the Selkan Tai Lodge. Just look at that beautiful mountainous scenery in the background and about six hours of actual hiking. Your altitude um, overnight is 3,869 metres, so you're at fairly reasonably high altitude on that trek. Okay, there are options for people to take horses or to be driven into that lodge. And on the second day, this is on the acclimatisation hike, pretty happy looking people there, um, because they're coming back to the spa that night. Okay, so it's about four hours and you've got the option to do some horseback riding. So it is fairly strenuous, but there are more or easier options on some of the days with horse riding or um, getting driven as such, depending on sort of how you're feeling and coping with the altitude. Okay, on the third day, this is where you're climbing up and over the high pass, so hiking up through the Rio Blanco Valley, um, Humaway Peak, on to, onwards to your third um, third night's accommodation at the Wairua Lodge. So you've got about six to eight hours of trekking that day. You've got reasonably high altitude and sleeping at a similar height to the previous night at Wairua Lodge. Okay, all of your meals, um, your your guides, your porters, everything has been taken care of for you, so you just have to concentrate on looking around, enjoying the beauty of the area and hiking as such. Okay, so trekking onwards on the fourth day from Waira Machai to Kolpa Lodge, which is shown in the background here. You can see some of the local delicacies that are, are laid out for the lunches, one of the thousands of varieties of potatoes um, from Peru, and a, and a selection of different dishes so that you're eating well along the way. There's lots of adventure that you can do along the way. And if you wish, one of the um, things is to go zip lining. Okay, that's a slightly alternative path. After the climb the previous day, you've only got around three to four hours hike on the fourth day. Some beautiful scenery, one of the waterfalls that you'll see on day five. Um, at which you'll end up at Lukma Lodge. Okay, so about five to six hours, and then you're you're continuing on Lukma Bamba to Machu Picchu. Okay, so you don't visit Machu Picchu on that day, but you're trekking through the jungle. You're trekking to a point at Yaktapata where you'll get a, a unique view of Machu Picchu. So where everyone comes in from the other side, it's only the people who are completing this trek who actually get to see. Um, the saddle and the location of Machu Picchu <coughs> from this angle. So the trek eventually ends you up at the hydroelectric train station for your one hour train journey, very scenic, onwards to the township of Aguas Calientes 
where you spend your sixth and final hotel night, okay? Beautiful hotel there at a lower altitude of around 1,900 metres. So certainly it is a, a fantastic trip to reach to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, Machu Picchu, okay? So you can see the, the beautiful Inca Sistel discovered in 1911 by Hiram Bingham, um, that you will have the opportunity to do a, undertake a tour there, spending a couple of hours with plenty of free time to wander, to take photos and to enjoy the um, the, the Inca site, okay, one of the seven wonders of the world, okay. So on the tour you'll see various different points um, and be able to explore the ruins um, or the archaeological site with your guide providing plenty of information. During the course of the, of the various different trails you get to try things such as zip lining. Um, there are other alternative treks that can include rafting, mountain biking, and there are some small villages where you can, because of the mountain scenery, the volcanoes, uh, there are some towns with the hot springs that uh, can be very relaxing after a hard day's trek. Okay, so that's one of the treks. That's the Lodge to Lodge Selk and Thai trek. And moving on to one of the other more popular treks is the Laris Trail. This can be done as a hiking and camping trail, or it can be done, once again, as a lodge type of trek. Okay, so this can be done in five days or seven days. What I'll be featuring on at the moment is a seven-day trek. So travelling from Cusco out into the Sacred Valley, Awanakancha, the town of Pisac, exploring the ruins and the, the village of Pisac. I want to you for its different types of camelids, llamas, alpacas, and some weaving um, demonstrations, and then onwards to the town of Lamay. Okay, you're staying a, a beautiful lodge there, and then on the following day, visiting some areas around Chinchero and around the Sacred Valley of the Incas, known as the Sacred Valley of the Incas because of the river that flows through there, the Urubamba River, which is the same river that goes around Machu Picchu. Okay well below Machu Picchu. So you've got a couple of nights in the Lamai um, Lodge um, and visiting to the Mara Salt Mines, Marae, to Chinchero before you travel onwards, driving up through Totora and then on the third day you have the option to visit Anxamaka which is a, a Inca ruins. Now all on, the, um, on these days you do have meat soft medium and difficult options. So people, it can suit all types of people um, wishing to get um, different things from the trek. So you can do hardcore trekking, you can do a, a softer option, or you can get uh, more involved with the communities on sort of cultural or community type um, engagement. Okay, so travelling on uh, and then onwards to our second lodge where we stay on the third and fourth night which is Wakawasi Lodge, okay, located in the mountains there where you'll have um, days to enjoy around there and then on day five down to Patacancha hiking and then onwards to Oriente Tumbo for night five, Aguas Calientes night six, Machu Picchu day seven and then back to Cusco. So you've got a seven day trek which I'll just run through here, some of the sites that you see on day one and day two. Um, this is a, a pachamanca or a typical Peruvian um, where they cook the, the, the food, the potatoes there and the, the lamb and various different chicken etc in the, in the hot rocks. Okay, Pisac ruins until you, you Anxamaca, the Inca ruins and this is the second lodge at Wakawasi Lodge where you spend two nights. You can see you're certainly up in the Andes there with the beautiful villages and the um, terraces and the rolling mountainous countryside. Spectacular views over the lake, getting to engage in community projects with the, with the farmers, digging for potatoes. You can see some of the potatoes there look a little bit different from what we've got and certainly a fascinating region of the world all of the people who are working within the lodges are from the local communities. Um, so you'll definitely meet and see the local people. And this is how they do dress in this Andean region. Okay. On, um, as you travel down, so this isn't a trek that um, involves hiking to Machu Picchu as such. So you come down to the village of Oliente Tumbo, which is the oldest continuously inhabited village or city in the Americas. Um, from the time of the Incas, you can still see the Inca streets, 
the little channels where the water runs, the Inca fortress there, so over 500 years um, continuously inhabited. You've got beautiful views um, with the lakes. There is options to visit the museum before eventually taking the train on day six from Oliente Tumbo to Machu Picchu. A train journey on a very comfortable train taking about one and three quarter hours to reach the village of Machu Picchu where you'll spend night six. Day seven, once again, travelling to Machu Picchu by a short bus ride up from the village um, where you can enjoy the tour free time before returning back to Machu Picchu on day seven. Okay, so this is a, a map that shows some of the various different trails that I've spoken about. You've got the, the classic Inca Trail here. You've got the, um, the, the, the trek around here, which is the Salkantay Lodge to Lodge trek. You've got a different trek, which is from Choki Keral, which is a different Inca ruin, basically traveling for seven days through um, varying landscapes from um, highlands to sort of um, almost jungle to reach to Machu Picchu. And then you've got different treks all around the Cusco area. Okay, the seven day Choki Keral to Machu Picchu. So you've got Chalky Caral pictures here, and that's sort of a, a reasonably unknown or a um, less trekked route at the moment, but certainly I believe that one that will be opening up a lot in the future. You've got the Ausangati, which isn't related to Machu Picchu because it doesn't visit Machu Picchu, but it's completely um, almost unvisited Andean areas where you're basically hiking through the mountains you're probably not likely to see any other tourists, but basically just the, the local population lives around there, that it does involve some very high level walks around 5,200 metres. There are various different treks available around the area. Um, and of course, um, anything that relates to Machu Picchu is certainly fantastic. So um, a couple of nights, one to two nights in the Machu Picchu area, on any trek is certainly worthwhile and all those day all those treks can be extended with additional days at Machu Picchu. Once you're in Machu Picchu for your overnights you've got a choice of accommodation from four to five star from boutique hotels um, and everything in between in the village of Machu Picchu or Atlas Calientes. Okay so that brings to the end today our uh, webinar about Machu Picchu. Um, so for those people who are wishing to enter the draw to join our FAMIL next year to Ecuador, just one question and you can send the answer to contours at contourstravel.com. What city is the starting point for Treks to Machu Picchu, um, which I mentioned a few times throughout the webinar. Okay, so um, just, re just to um, reiterate, um, this is our this is our map of the world as such as we cover Latin America only, no Asia, no Africa, no Europe. Um, we specialise in Latin America, so please feel, feel free to contact us on the email address or look at our website, contourstravel.com, um, for any information. And please don't hesitate to get in contact if we can assist you with your client's Latin America travel needs. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to type away. I look forward to answering your questions and being in contact in the future to assist you with your clients' Latin America travel needs. Wishing you all a very happy weekend. Any questions? <laughs>